Namaste. Welcome to the Conscious Combo Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Pippa Leslie. I'm here to share everything I learn, see, and channel. This podcast is for the conscious and curious beings who are ready to dive deeper into spirituality. I am so grateful you are here. Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm really excited again today because I've got my beloved Chris on with me. But before we get into our topic today, I just want to give a special mention to Michelle at the Crystal Point. She is a spiritual shop down here in Hamilton in New Zealand. So if you are listening to this podcast and you are in the Hamilton area, even further afield, I know the New Zealanders like to drive a long way for what they need. Uh, Michelle's shop is incredible. She has everything you need for free spirituality, for your spiritual business, cards, crystals, sage, incense, you name it. It's like Aladdin's cave for, you know, spirituality. So head down to see her and, and she will help you. And you're wearing uh, your birthday present I that am. I bought there. From I am. <laughs> that that uh, the young Horus. son bought. Yeah, he bought it for you there. So yeah, go check it out. Yeah, she's amazing. She's got amazing stuff in there. So let's get on to today's topic. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. One. You can leave this one if you want to. Big one? Triggers. I mean, it's it's... Oh, it's what's made our relationship to the next level, dealing with our our traumas. But you know, we'll dig into triggers. And what's funny is we we started this last week, and it always happens. The universe turns around in in our relationship and says, "Oh, you think you're an expert? Well, here, let me test you." Because <laughs> it, it's rare for Pip to trigger me, but the next very next day, I was triggered. Yeah. And we both are like, it's ironic because this always happens. We, uh, I, I even think the course that we did, we we ran into a couple speed bumps after we mm. we posted it and uh, had to deal with it. Where we're constantly being challenged to push ourselves to evolve spiritually. So I can talk about that. I do want to dissect what happened that day and how I dealt with it. But for me, a trigger is when. My partner or anybody, it could be anybody, yeah. but especially if this happens to your partners because we are talking about a conscious relationship. So let's just, let's keep it within those terms, not somebody at work or family, or you just go into a shop and somebody triggers you, but in your relationship, your partner does something generally innocently, but it triggers you where you have that flood of anxiety, that flood of a little bit of anger like, why are they doing this to me? What is wrong with them? And you get all of those feelings, negative feelings, flood in. And it's because you love your partner so much and you know they love you so much or you hope they love you so much. I mean, mm -hmm. with Pip, I know she does. But it, you're triggered. And now all of a sudden it's your fight or flight, which is our very, very basic, you know, just going to basic biology, basic animal behavior. It's a fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I flee. I don't want to get in fights, so I'll go and isolate myself, shut down, not talk. That's how I've learned to deal with my trauma, my pain um, when I'm triggered is I completely shut down. And it, it, it's funny. You don't even think clearly in that moment when you're triggered. But I will tell you, the light at the end of the tunnel of doing this work the last three years with Pippa in our relationship, I now instantly go... I know I'm triggered. And then I'll talk to you in a minute about like how I process it today. I love that, how you see it as well through your lens. And that's what's important is that we're seeing the world through our lens mm -hmm. and our perspective and our trauma. All of you listening have unique trauma, unique lives, unique environments, unique dynamics, and each of you are to your own. So it's you know, Chris and I hold that space for people to have, you know, you have different, you know, different things going on in your life, and that's why we want to work with couples to help you become more conscious and it was interesting today with a client she was talking about our, our episode last week saying how it was amazing and you know with 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 couples as well is like I said to her I'm so grateful for our, our relationship is 99.9% .9 peaceful like it's it's like a, a breeze mm -hmm. you know it's like it's like a breeze and then when there is that little bit of fire you know coming in with the trigger it's like it's instantly sorted it's instantly resolved and, you know, when you have the tools and you start to work on triggers, it kind of becomes more easy and you start to actually honor yourself and honor what you need and honor what you need in that moment. And your partner has to be able to give you that honor it back. 
So for me, a trigger is something that ignites a memory of something that reminds you of a past trauma. So for example, you know, we will talk about a trigger that happened for Chris and I last week. You know, with Chris, it seems to be, a, a you know, a, we, we are living a pattern. So you'll find that the same trigger will come up. So you could be having a great day in work, you come home and your partner said he would do the washing and the, you know, I'm just using a very basic example, and the dishes. And you come home from a really hard day, loads of work colleagues triggered you and you come home and there's more jobs to do and you get triggered, you know. And that's the thing is like, we're looking to be offended in that moment as well. So if you already are triggered, you will look and scan your environment to find things to confirm the trigger, to make the trigger even more real. So with triggers, it can be really interesting because they can come in all shapes and forms. I had a trigger last Thursday, which we won't talk about on this podcast because it's not about relationships, but it was very deep for me to work on my trigger around being validated and to be needed and to be seen. But with with a partner, it's slightly different because we put so much expectation onto relationships. We put so much of our selves into relationship we invest so much into into relationships and like as chris said when we are in that trigger we can't see clearly and we literally think the relationship's going to end we end up panicking we literally shit ourselves and go oh my god this is it like what's going to happen how am i going to deal with this but when you have the right tools you will literally move through it Mm -hmm. it's not you know not avoiding it and a lot of you that were listening have reached out to me thank you because i know some of you find it hard to navigate triggers because you find it hard to communicate to your partner so you just brush it aside you brush the trigger and go i'll be fine i'll be fine i'll be fine but ultimately you're actually making the trigger worse because it will just keep showing up and Mm -hmm. showing up and showing up and showing up so I, for me, my main triggers in relationships, well, I probably wouldn't say there's that many anymore, but most of mine were around wanting to be loved a certain way. And if I wasn't loved a certain way, it was kind of like I had high expectations because my past relationships were pretty, you know, pretty crap, you know. So, you know, it depends on what relationship you're in. But Chris and I are going to talk about what we did last week for our trigger, even though it was only a minor one. You know, we've been through some really big ones, haven't we, when Mm -hmm. we were separated. So, you know, maybe because you were the one that was probably triggered is like one thing that I've learned is that we can't point the finger because what happens is when you're triggered, you want to point the finger at the partner and say, you made me feel this way. You made me angry. You made mm-hmm. me disappointed. You pissed me off, blah, 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 blah. But actually it's not like the trigger actually comes, like you said, from something innocently that wasn't done maliciously. But that's the, I want to find the, the fine line here is, we're not saying a trigger in the sense of they're cheating on you every weekend, no. like we mentioned last week. This is a trigger which is innocently done, yeah. like they forgot to do the dishes, they forgot to pick up whatever, and you know something really minor to medium. You know, so yeah. it's with, not, and it's not abuse. You yeah, know, that's yeah. not okay. It's not, uh, you know, saying really nasty stuff. Mm. Uh, that's yeah, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about it's like. Your partner does, like you said, something innocently or forgets something or it leads to an argument. You know, finances is a big one everybody fights about. Um, Sex is something people will often fight about Mm -hmm. in a relationship. So to to break down, I guess, to, to, to where we are today. Yeah. And then we can talk about how we got here. What happened was we recorded Sunday. We're very busy. I've got my podcast. Pip has her podcast. Um, I've, I'm working all the time and, and then generally you throw in two kids, you know, uh, 50% of the time and there's a lot going on a lot of the time in this house and, and we're doing well with it. Like we, we work very, very well. Last Monday, uh, we had kind of a, a great loving weekend and, but my Mondays, Tuesdays for me, work wise are very busy. I'm teaching all day. I come home. I have deadlines to meet for podcasting stuff, uh, other work I'm doing. So I came home. It was also Halloween. It was Halloween, which was weird energy. And I knew (laughs) the kids were coming over to go trick-or-treating. So I had to get all this stuff done. And I was already tired. We had a a long weekend of fun. And and, uh, I remember I was sitting at the computer trying to get stuff done. But we've also got um, some work to do uh, for visa work that we're, we're doing here in New Zealand. And Pip's the type of person that needs to get it done now. Like she's very productive, driven, right? <laughs> like it's got to get done now. And I and the our immigration advisor, or whatever, was saying you don't need this for a few days. And I was like already tired, 
and Pip's sitting down like, okay, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. And I'm like, and it's a lot of my stuff with graduate school, getting diplomas or getting transcripts, all this stuff. And I was just so overwhelmed. So I just went on a walk before we recorded and I, and I was thinking about this, like processing what I wanted to talk about. So right now for me, my big trigger in the relationship is I get overwhelmed. I, I have uh, people needing, I'm a very, you know, obviously Pip's very giving, I'm very giving. So when I have the, the, the boys needing me and their kids, they're a priority because they don't understand adult stuff. Then we have a new puppy who's very needy. <laughs> she's a beautiful dog. She's the sweetest thing ever, but she's one that's always got to be in your space. Uh, she, she's triggering you but in a good way. She, yes, she's yes. so like, she's so perfect for what we need. Yes, yeah. Teaching us stuff. So, you know, I get that. And then we get Arlo, the, the big lab, who's always hungry or wants out. And then Pip needs something. And then I've got deadlines and I get really overwhelmed. And I'm like this and I'm my, my mind's firing like this and I'm going crazy. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, I hit a breaking point. <laughs> and so I remember going into the lounge and I sat down and I said, I was, I was angry I'm like, I'm really overwhelmed right now. I'm really triggered. I, I think I said, I, I love you, but not in my nicest way. But I'm like, I love you. I'm just, I just can't deal with this right now. And I walked out. Not like you're, you're a jerk. You're an a hole. You're the, you're the cause of all my problems. I just knew I was triggered. So what I do is I tell Pip, I'm triggered. Generally, doesn't have to do with you. I know it's not your fault. And I removed myself from the situation so I can go calm down. Uh, went trick-or-treating with the kids. Came back, said, I love you. You know, we'll process it. Everything's going to be fine. I know it will be. And that was it. You you fell asleep because it was Halloween. And, and I was up a little bit later because of it. And then the next day, everything's fine. Like, we talked about it. Said, I'm sorry. I'm triggered. So the, the whole point is, right now, in my point in life, in our relationship, a, a trigger for me that keeps coming up and it's going to keep coming up until I fully deal with it. So I probably need to journal more about it is I get overwhelmed. And I think a lot of it, part of me on the walk was thinking, why do I get overwhelmed? It part of it's trauma from past relationships that I'm afraid if I don't do everything, Pip will leave me. Like that's yeah. my, my big deep fear. That's why this trigger is coming up because of past relationships that have failed. I know Pip's not going to leave me, but it's just that's my my trigger deep down. I think that's and, why, and I know that, and that's yeah. why it's got to but got to be open about that mm -hmm. too. Is like if you explain that to your partner that way, it's like instead of saying I'm triggered because you 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 yeah, you yeah, you, yeah. the defense comes up yeah. where you know when when you sit with me, I know why you're triggered. Like because I know overwhelm is a, yeah. is a pattern for you. Right now, yeah. yeah, so it's kind of like I I don't realize, and then I go oops, and then you know just to kind of give you a bit of a indicator of what happened from my perspective, I kind of felt Chris getting overwhelmed. And I could have maybe stopped a little bit before, but again, everything's divine. Everything has purpose and I don't do it maliciously. I don't think hey, I'm going to trigger him. I'm just being my myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very driven. As Chris said, it's a passion. It's a strength of mine. But again, Chris has a different work schedule to me. So I think, you know, it's a lesson for me too, mm -hmm. is that, you know, I, I panic thinking, you know, it's, I wouldn't say I was triggered, but I panic thinking things need to be done now mm -hmm. because if they're not done now, I'm going to lose them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's something I work on. But for me, it was like what I honor in myself is that, you know, I knew you were triggered and I know what you need in that moment. So I took a bath and I let you have the lounge. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the kids that night. So you had the lounge to watch your movies and I had a bath. I listened to my, my audio books and I got in bed and I read and I fell asleep and I said, I love you. I came in and gave you a good night mm -hmm. kiss. And, you know, he, he said, thank you for giving me space. But an old version of me would have been like, oh, my God, I'm panicking. Like, what if he gets more mad at me? And what if he leaves me? And what if he, he's had enough of this? You know, and that's kind of like how I used to be. But now I'm at this level where I'm like, we can talk about this mm -hmm. like adults and we can talk about this consciously. And we know it's more than what we think it is. It's just. Well, I think the big thing is. For me, just knowing I'm triggered yeah. and recognizing, okay, I'm triggered because in that moment, and I've studied a lot of animal behavior, that's part of my, my scientific work, is our lizard brain, our, our very basic instincts that have kept us alive for 300,000 years since Homo sapiens been around, is we have a fight or flight. And all of our thinking, our critical thinking, our... Uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm not a brain scientist or a, a psychologist, but that half of the brain that that maybe it was the left side that's mm-hmm. that's very analytical Logical, shuts yeah. down. Mm-hmm. It's all reactive. It's all instinctive, and so. It's funny that when you're in that trigger and you think about it, you don't think clearly. You no, you're really clouded, don't. Yeah. So to bust through that that haze, that fog, for me today, I'm very proud of us that we. I can say, I'm triggered. I know I'm triggered. This has nothing to do with you, or very little has to do with you. I'm going to remove myself from the situation to process it, and then once I process it. Then I come together and we talk about it and I say, okay, this, this brought up this memory. That's why I feel this way. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, in your twenties, your thirties, your teens, if you can start to recognize what triggers are and, and I guess next, I'll let you talk for a while, but next talk about how we deal with them or how we got to here, because it was a lot of work. It wasn't just, oh, I oh, I know I'm triggered now. Okay, well, I'll be better. It's like it took some work to get to that point. Well, it did. And I think it takes a lot of patience and commitment as well because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like with a lot of relationships, it starts to get rough and hard and people get triggered and they run the opposite way. Mm -hmm. You know, divorce ends up happening and that's not for everyone, but I've noticed it with a lot of people is that, you know, people aren't, they just want the it all to be fine and happy. And that's why a lot of men, I'm not just saying this is just men, but a lot of men find it very hard to talk about their feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, that if, you know, if like, I'm talking to an, an ex, for example, about how I feel. They just don't want to listen. Everything, everything's fine. You know, they don't want to get into the deep, nitty-gritty mm-hmm. stuff. And the thing is, that's where the magic happens. Mm-hmm. Because to sit down and say to you, like, for example, let's talk about an example. So you trigger, let's let's say this is all, you know, this is all just an example. So say, let's say t- tonight you triggered me, right? So let's just say, uh, let's think of an example. Uh, I saw an ex text you, mm-hmm. right? Say I saw an ex text you and I was in a really, like, I was in an anxious state anyway. I hadn't done much work for myself and I was kind of like just looking to be offended. Mm-hmm. You know, I would then look at that and blame you. Mm-hmm. I would want to blame you. Mm-hmm. And how I would have reacted is I would have sat there and, and sat with, say, say it was like six o'clock at night and I just flashed and looked at your phone. You've seen it and not told me. I'd be like, Ugh, and then my trust issues would start kicking mm-hmm. in. I would be fantasizing about what she said. Mm-hmm. Are you, have you? Is that one text? Has that been? Has that been several texts? Has that been a whole conversation? Is he having an affair on me? Is mm-hmm. he cheating on me? Has he done this before? And women listening, you know what it's like. Mm-hmm. The overthink will literally run your mind. Mm-hmm. You don't think clearly, and the ego likes to make stories up. It's the great storyteller, and then I start to get angry, and literally the emotions evolve. And then you again, like I did a, an Instagram reel the other week about you coming in saying, hi, you okay, babe? And I'm like, I'm fine. And actually I'm yeah. not fine. Yeah. So, you know, for an example is like, you know, it's hard, if you're not speaking about how you feel at all, that, that can be damaging too, because then in three days later, you've let this thing kind of rise and build mm-hmm. inside of you. And then something else happens and you just snap. Yeah. And that's what causes the huge blow up. Your partner's confused then your partner feels guilty and then you start blaming and then he starts blaming you and it just escalates and escalates and escalates. And then you're talking about breaking up. You're talking about this, you're talking about that. Where? Let's think of the other example. Now that's a very like just random example. It's kind of, we've been there though. We were there like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. When you saw my, yeah. yeah, When you saw my ex message me on. on, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And now it's like, whatever, like it's not no one's fault. It's, it's like if an ex texts you and I, like, You'd be like, oh yeah, I hope, okay. they're, I hope they're okay, and yeah. it's just because you get to that conscious level, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. But so the other, so the other aspect of that yeah. example is, for, say, say it was today, how I think today, mm-hmm. how Pip is today. If I saw an ex text you, I'd go, oh babe, such a body's text you, like you know. I... <laughs> Why are you looking at my phone? <laughs> no. no, but like this it. is this it. is yeah. like the other level of, you know, if you are still triggered and where I am today, for example. Mm-hmm. So say you are triggered and you have a bit more consciousness about you. If I saw an ex text you, I'd say. And I and obviously you knew about it. I would sit down and say, "Hey, babe, you know, can I just talk to you about something that mm-hmm. happened today? It kind of bothered me, and I know it's not your fault, but it just, you know, it just oh, it made me feel a bit. Oh, it made yeah. me it made me feel. And then you talk about how it made you feel, mm-hmm. not about how how the partner is, because you want to point the finger. It's about how it made you feel. And for example, I could say something like, "It made me feel like." I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, um, it felt like, it made me feel like you, you weren't being trustworthy towards me, you know, you know, you can kind of go into anything you want to say and feel, I'm trying to feel into now how I would, how I would have felt, so let me just think about that for a moment, 
I could say something like it made me feel rejected. It made me feel abandoned, you know, and this, this is again through my lens, mm -hmm. you know, you could probably feel different things, but then allowing your partner to know, and then, and then saying, I feel this way because this happened with an ex where blah, 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 yeah. blah. So you're telling a story from the heart mm -hmm. to your partner. And, you know, if you've got a listening, compassionate, loving partner like I have, you can sit and talk about it. And that's what I love about it because it's getting, you know, think about all the stuff you know about me. You know my deepest, darkest fears. You know my deepest, darkest triggers. You know everything about me and I'm the same with you. When you're triggered, I know what's going on in your head. I know what's going on. And that's why I now I can give you that space. So if you're resonating with this, which I'm pretty sure you will do, there's so many examples we could talk about. If you want to give one from a mental no, it's, perspective, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an important topic because this is this is what it all boils down to in a conscious relationship, I think, among some other things. But you know, like going back to when we were separated, there was some insecurity issues, and I was processing coming, you know, to New Zealand and how a relationship and, and some infidelity issues in my past that were major triggers of mine, mm -hmm. and. I know I had some trust issues while we were separated. And it, it was like, it's funny because I think the last time we actually got into any sort of fight, I think maybe it was January, maybe. And here we are in November. Maybe it was when I was in Australia, maybe. No, I don't think we did. No. I thought about it. I thought about when no. you were in Australia. No, we didn't at all, at all, because I knew you were so close and we knew the end was in sight. And we and it was just in January or December because your energy was so low. I was, I missed you so it much. It was so yeah. hard. It was so mm -hmm. hard being apart for so long. Uh, but we did it. Um, so this was going back to 2021, probably June, July, when you were out with some friends and I had trust issues come up and I was majorly triggered. I remember it specifically. I thought, you know, she's cheating on me. I didn't hear from her. She's off with somebody. I was so drunk. And that's like yeah. not me at all. Yeah. Just yeah. your behavior was off. I, I, I wanted to escape my reality. Yeah. That's what it was. And it, and yeah. It, it, yeah. And it, it's, you don't need to defend yourself at all. Like it's, it was a trigger. Yeah. And looking back at it, had to deal with it. And, and if we work, I, got, I have the journal. And uh, maybe we can pause it and I can maybe find it where I wrote. But I journaled out how I felt, you know. And maybe it wasn't the nicest stuff I said about Pip. But I was like, oh, she's da 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 Because it was my anger, my yeah. rage. But then it turned into... Wow. Okay. What's the bottom line of this? What What's causing this? And then it was. Oh, it wasn't really about Pip. It was about X. You know, my ex so and so. And when this happened, and I was blindsided, I was being cheated on. And all this, all these emotions came up to be healed. Mm -hmm. So you did something. You were out with friends. You today, my compassionate side is, hell, Pip hasn't seen me in eight months. She's just going out for a weekend just to escape and and just wow, have a blowout. Which isn't like her. That's fine. That was the last time I actually got drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... But it was like, you know, it's fine. And that's okay. Yeah. And it, 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 sh it should have been fine. But it mm. triggered me. So today I would process it in a whole different way in that, okay, the reason I'm feeling insecure is because of X, Y, Z. Not because Pip's a bad person or a bad mm -hmm. partner. So it took work. It took journaling. It took mirror exercises. It took... For me, because I had a lot of trauma because I'm much older and I've had more experience in relationships of being cheated on or bad fights or, you know, a whole bunch of stuff uh, to process it. And, but I think the big thing for me too was I wanted to do the work and I wanted this relationship so bad and make it work that, you know, I did the work. Yeah. And, and I think that's the commitment you need to yourself if your other partner isn't doing it it's fine but i think anybody listening to this they have to commit to themselves first yeah. because you will not attract a partner like you talk about manifestation and all the stuff that you've done before we met i don't think you're going to attract the right partner or get your current partner to change their patterns unless you change yourself yeah, right? you're going to attract someone who yeah. is literally going to mirror back stuff you need to work on. That's yeah. why 
people say I'm, I keep attracting toxic partners I keep attracting men who aren't available I keep attracting men who cheat I keep you know and that's the thing it's like it's not it's not your fault it's not saying there's nothing wrong with you mm -hmm. it's the fact that you know that that could be a mirror image of your dad your mom you know like we do kind of date our partner uh, our parents don't mm -hmm. we from that perspective mm -hmm. so like you got to think about when it comes down to you, who you want in your life it's about you too mm -hmm. you want to have that's why i've started the six week manifestation conscious calling to help you manifest your dream partner just like i did with chris helping you did exactly what i did it's about you mm -hmm. it's about you wanting to be at that level to meet that partner if you want a conscious partner like i have with chris i had to elevate my energy i had to heal part of myself mm -hmm. Because I knew there'd be work in the relationship, but I knew I wanted a, a partner who was open-minded, who was conscious, who would listen, who was compassionate, who was loving. Yeah. You know. Who... Yeah, and it, it and and I think for people that are in a relationship now and they don't want to lose that partner, whether you're a man or a woman, you can start the work, and their curiosity may be piqued. You can have, you know, when you're in a safe place, you can talk about it, like. I don't like that we fight. I don't like that we argue. We argue about money or we argued about uh, frequency of sex in the relationship or we argued about what we were having for dinner, like stupid things that really, I mean, some of it's not stupid. Some of it's very, you know. Yeah, but don't forget important. we were trying to keep a, a long distance relationship alive and sometimes yeah. I did not feel sexy. I did not feel no, like. No, no, no. And just that, saying that's like, what I'm saying with yeah. like our triggers is that, yeah. you know, being able to talk to you about that. Yeah. To say like, I don't feel like I want to be you know sexual because yeah. it was like i just felt so down because i missed you so much yeah. you know no, i'm just saying for anybody listening like yeah, just yeah, the general, yeah. i'm trying to think of general thing people fight about is you know if you start working on yourself and the partner you're with they see that they see changes in you and then you can hopefully influence them to work on themselves you know so you don't have to leave a relationship to find that perfect partner mm -hmm. you know maybe you're already with them and you just need to grow together as a couple like pip and i have you know, I wasn't, I was not in a good headspace when Pip and I started meeting at all, at all. And she was like my white angel coming down to reach me out of the darkness and pull me out. I wrote her this poem about it and story about pulling me out of the darkness. And she's influenced me through her actions and my willingness to do the work. And it did not happen overnight. Like, that's the thing that I think... I can't sell you a quick fix, but I can sell you a path to enlightenment, a path to conscious coupling, a path to a better life. Like we talked about it the other day, um, you know, I just want to tell people and you want to tell people, I wish you could see the world through my eyes. I think that's either a Wayne Dyer quote or somebody else. I've heard a spiritual master say that. Yeah. If you can see the world through my eyes today, not three years ago before I met Biff, mm. but today after doing all the work, it, you know... I think you would be amazed at, at what the world really is about, you know, and, and, and there's still a lot of growth to go. Yeah. It's like we're still on the healing journey. Yeah. Like you got that trigger last week. I got that trigger yeah. last week, but I think like what I want to boil down to is that, you know, all we really truly want is a loving, peaceful relationship, to be honest. And if you don't have that right now, you know, where are the leaks in the relationship? Mm -hmm. Where are the leaks? And there will be some, and that's why people like Chris and I, in this conscious relationship want to help you in that way because triggers will come in all forms and all shapes and sizes and every single emotion will arise and to have someone help you navigate through that i had a client call today who i work with privately and she asked she said i listened to you and chris last week and it really helped me can you help me navigate this trigger i had with my partner and i love it I absolutely love it because I help them, you know, it's obviously related to some sort of trauma they've mm -hmm. had in their life. It's a pattern that's coming up for them to learn. You know, your, your the world is your mirror. Mm -hmm. And when you take, I think it's like responsibility for your triggers, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. people, again, when, you, when the ego is in play, the ego is looking to be offended. The ego is looking to point the finger. And that's why, what, who do we point the finger at? The closest people mm -hmm. to us. So I think when, when the triggers come up in relationships, it, I want to kind of address, and maybe you can talk about this a little bit, Chris, is that I want to, I want to call you babe, but I'm like, <laughs> this is like trying to be professional. Yeah. So I think like, say you have a partner who is really hard to communicate, find it hard to communicate. You know, I, I have what I would probably recommend, but what would you say, especially from a man's perspective? Because it seems to be men that mm -hmm. find it hard to, I wouldn't say listen, but communicate because they've been told that, yeah, you know, crying's weakness. It and is, and it's... <laughs> 
like I said, fight or flight. I think most men don't want to fight. We avoid it. We we don't want drama. A lot of people don't want drama. Maybe we've learned as young boys to shut up and keep it inside. We don't express feelings. We don't do that. So yeah, it's it's hard from a man's perspective to, to, to get other men to open up. And I've been a part of it. I was in a great men's group in the States before I moved here where we did share feelings. Um, and there are groups out there that, you know, maybe I should look for one around here to go where men can just share, yeah. you know, what they're dealing with in life, the yeah. stress of it all and have an outlet. And I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of men hold that in. And the expectations of being a man. Yeah, mm. and so it's like, oh, well, I don't want to deal with my triggers because, you know, it's not what I do. And No, if, if you want to get to a relationship where you're in harmony with your partner as a man, you shouldn't be afraid to do the work, yeah. you know. And I think maybe next week or in a couple of weeks we can talk about journaling or something, what that means. What that, some tools. Had some tools, yeah. We'll talk about the tools of dealing with triggers a little bit more in depth, our experience, what we've learned from other people. I mean, Pip and I, we we had some uh, twin flame counselors come in and help mm-hmm. us. And, you know, I did some mirror exercising with one that really helped me uh, while we were apart to to get through it. We weren't afraid to look for help from others. Yeah. So don't be afraid to reach out to us or reach out to somebody you trust to help you through your journey. You know, it, it we did not do this alone. We've read a lot. We listen to podcasts a lot from others. We uh, we've done the work. You yeah, know, we and still, we're still do the work. And we're still yeah. doing the work. Mm-hmm. You know, meditate, meditate, meditate. That's mm-hmm. one of the best things. One of my colleagues yesterday at work asked me. She she had to do a mindfulness course, and I I said you know do five minute. She had to teach mindfulness. Yeah. In fifteen minutes or less, and I said, well, do a five minute meditation. Open it up with that. Yeah. Quiet your mind. Yeah. Um, start connecting with your true self, your soul. Um, connect with nature, all of those things that we're going to talk about. But triggered for me is the big one. That's the big one that we've overcome. And I think that's why Pip and I's relationship is so easy. Yeah. And it's triggers and nudges from the universe saying, hey, you got something to work on. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why, you know, triggers come up in relationships mostly. Yeah. And, you know, relationships can be family and friends too, but partners are the, probably the ones that get to us the most because mm-hmm. I've invested all this time mm-hmm. into this person mm-hmm. and you start to overthink all the stuff. I'm going to have to sell the house. I'm going to have to sell the car. I'm going to have to do this. And the anxiety it gives mm-hmm. you, I know how you feel. We both do. Yeah. So if you would want help with any of your triggers, if you want help with dealing with these triggers, you know, if you want, you want any help with, you know, becoming more conscious in your relationship, you know, Chris and I are offering free 15 minute calls to connect with couples even to connect with you as a, as an individual in your relationship and to help you navigate triggers because we can see it from both perspectives and it's something that we're very passionate about. So I think we're going to probably like try and leave it there because we can kind of go into triggers yeah, we'll like, go, we'll go all day. yeah, we could talk all <laughs> yeah. for hours. Chris and I are very good at talking. So if there is any questions that you have with this podcast episode, please reach out to us. I know some of you have emailed and messaged about our last episode. Thank you so much for those lovely words. We, it means the world. We are going to be carrying on doing this because I love it and I get to do something with my amazing mm. partner. And also I want to leave you on a little tip is tell your partner what you love about them. Stir into their eyes like I'm doing right now and tell them what you love about them. And, you know, it really helps because it builds connection. That's the big thing. And truly deep down into your soul, that's what we want. Mm. Your soul wants connection. Under all the layers of trauma, there's, you want to feel connected to someone. So that's what we help you to do and feel connected to yourself as well. So love your heart. <laughs> I love your heart. <laughs> right, guys, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you soon for another episode. I love you, babe. Love you too. Bye, guys. Bye.